Hi guys, how's it going? For those of you who are new to my channel, my name is Laura Ricklick, and for those of you that have been around a little while, welcome back. <laughs> so you're probably wondering about the title of this video, and uh, I guess the best way to go about it is by telling you, yes, it is true. In January of this past year, I was diagnosed with stage one melanoma, uh, which is essentially a form of skin cancer. Now, I really don't want to make this video just sort of a whole pity party kind of thing because in my case, I was actually really lucky. Um, it was caught early. There was a lot of positive factors, like the fact that it wasn't very deep and more so just sort of surface level. Um, but instead what I wanted to do is just sort of share my experience with you guys um, to hopefully encourage you to just sort of check your skin regularly, hit up a dermatologist or doctor ASAP if you see anything funky and that kind of stuff. Okay, so here we go. So my whole life I've never really been great at taking care of my skin. Um, as someone who is super pasty and has tons of freckles and moles, um, I would just sort of have that, oh, it won't happen to me mentality. Um, and I would spend my summers laying out in the sun without sunscreen and just sort of getting a little bit of a burn because then that burn would turn into a tan. And so I thought, oh, you know, it's okay. It's just a little burn. So fast forward to this past fall. Uh, and I started to notice that two small moles that had been on my chest for like forever had started morphing into just one big mole. I mean, I didn't really think anything of it at the time, but it started getting bigger and bigger and even started getting a little scabby, which is where I was kind of like, eh, this is funky. If, like this is probably not right. And a few people even started mentioning to me that they were a little concerned about it. So I uh, hit up my family doctor and went to get it checked out. So when I went in and he started looking at it, uh, he was actually pretty concerned. And it was one of those weird things where it was like, you could tell that someone was concerned, but they were kind of trying to hide it a little bit to like make you feel better. Um, Anyway, he told me essentially that, you know, it could be something, it could be nothing, but he was going to send me to a dermatologist just to just be sure. So a few weeks later, I hit up the dermatologist that he had referred me to and she checked it out as well. Um, she actually wasn't concerned about it. She just thought it was an agitated mole, but she essentially gave me two options. One of them being that she could remove part of it there um, and then send it off to be biopsied. Um, or she could send me to a plastic surgeon because it was too big for her to remove the entire thing herself. Um, and that surgeon could remove the entire thing and then send me off to get a biopsy as well. So just to get the ball rolling, I went with the option where she would just remove it then and there instead of having to wait for another appointment. Um, so that's what we did. And then she told me that I'd get the results in about two weeks when I went back in to get the stitches removed. But instead, about a week later, I got a phone call from her while I was in the mail room of my apartment. And uh, she essentially told me over the phone that she had just gotten my biopsy results and that the test had come back positive for melanoma. Now, there was a lot of positives in that, but at the end of the day, it's someone over the phone telling you that you have cancer, um, which is terrifying. Um, I will honestly never forget where I was sitting in this red chair in the mail room talking to her on the phone for a while just like talking about all the steps and she was going through all the information. It's like being hit with a brick wall, essentially. Anyways, we proceeded to talk about the results for quite a while. She told me that a lot of it was positive. The only thing that was concerning was that my cell regrowth rate was pretty fast, um, which is something that they wanted to check out. Um, and because of that and the fact that I am young and overall generally healthy, uh, they thought it was best for me to be referred to Princess Margaret Hospital and meet with a surgeon to talk about, um, like the option for surgery and a sentinel lymph node biopsy. So for that, basically what they do is they would essentially remove a little bit more of the area, about a centimeter past where the mole and melanoma site was just to sort of prevent anything from being on the skin and spreading 
Um, and then the sentinel lymph node biopsy is essentially when they go in, um, there's different areas in your body that have lymph nodes. So they can be in your neck, they can be in your armpit area, or they can be sort of near your hips. And those are essentially where toxins in your body will drain out of. So for me, having it on my left side of my chest, it would automatically drain to my left armpit area. And so they would go in to the armpit slash side and do an incision and remove a few of those lymph nodes to essentially test whether my melanoma had spread. So fast forward a few appointments with my family doctor, the surgeon, dermatologist, and the day of my surgery actually arrives at Princess Margaret Hospital. It was actually last Monday, Tuesday. So I went into Mount Sinai Hospital on the Monday afternoon um, where they did a radioactive injection into four different areas around the mole uh, to see where it drained to, like which lymph nodes. And you know, I am the first person to admit that I am beyond squeamish with anything medical. Like, give me a needle and I will basically pass out. But this was four needles around the mall, north, south, east, west, and it felt like a bee sting going in. But once I started injecting the radioactive stuff, oh my god it was honestly like it felt like my chest was on fire like it burned so bad honestly i think i broke my mom's hand squeezing it so hard <laughs> but anyway after the injections they put me in this sort of uh, machine that kind of looked like what i picture an mri machine to look like it was kind of like a tunnel um, and that was to take pictures of where the radioactive stuff was traveling so that uh, the doctors the next day and the surgeon would know exactly where to go in to test the lymph nodes and remove them. The whole thing probably took about 45 minutes while they sort of pushed me in like up to my nose and then past like my whole body in that thing, which I kept my eyes closed because like, hello, claustrophobic. <laughs> and then they did another one like down near the hip area and did all these angles just to sort of make sure that that was exactly where they were going, the armpit. So after all of that, they marked the spot with a little X and then sent me home to just sort of rest until my surgery the next day. So the next morning I woke up at 5.30 a.m. and rolled on down to Princess Margaret with my parents. Um, I was surprisingly not that nervous. You know, for someone who is just like medically squeamish, I wasn't concerned at all and I guess it was because I was just ready to just get it over with and have everything be done and not have to worry about it but we got down there it was pretty quiet they sent me to my room where I could change into the hospital gown and the little booties and get everything organized and then at 7 30 the nurse came to get me and roll me on down to what I guess would be the OR prep area because yeah so down there I met again with the surgeon and he just sort of marked the area and made sure that everything was good to go for today. Um, met with the anesthetologist, anesthetologist, anesthetologist. I can never say those words. Anyway, I met with her um, and she just sort of like described the procedure, what she would be doing because I'd be under general anesthetic, intubated, the whole works. And then I also met the rest of the team and got my IV just before rolling in for surgery. And before long, I was asleep on the table and undergoing surgery. So the surgery itself took probably about an hour and a half. Um, I obviously have no memory of it since I was asleep, but the next thing I knew, I was waking up in the recovery room, chilling there for a little bit, taking some pain medication, um, and then they took the little oxygen tubes out of my nose and rolled me on out to uh, chill with my parents and then get brought up to my room. So I probably left around 5 p.m. that day, I think. Um, it was a one-day surgery. I didn't have to stay overnight. I could go home. Um, and now I am back in Ottawa, chilling with my parents, recovering a little bit. Honestly, some days are better than others in terms of pain. It's still really hurts and we're on to day five here but it is definitely starting to get a little bit more comfortable every day starting to do these recovery exercises so that uh, my shoulder gets back to normal all of that being said though it is so 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 important to check your body um, 
honestly, I was one that never really did that before, but I know after this experience, I totally am um, sunscreen checking on the regular to make sure that no moles are starting to look funky because honestly, I would not wish this experience upon anyone. Even though my story itself is like, very positive for it, it's still not something you ever want to go through. My older cousin actually taught me a really good tip um, that she had learned from a dermatologist when she was a kid and that was that moles aren't necessarily going to be perfectly round. They will vary in shape, um, but what you should look for is make sure it looks like a melted chocolate chip. So essentially it's going to be mostly the same color it's not going to vary in color and it might not be perfectly round but for the most part it's like fairly circular but if you are ever concerned about any kind of mole get it checked out by a doctor dermatologist any of those things because it's way better to catch it early and get it removed before it's anything anyways i hope this video was helpful to you in some way um, i would love it if you shared it with your friends and family just to sort of get the word out there especially since summer is just around the corner but with that being said i will see you next time bye